Good morning, hope everyone is well. It's the season where people spend hundreds of pounds on presents, whether it's the Jewish festival of Hanukkah, less than two weeks away, or the wider festival, the Christian festival, Christmas time, people like to share, which would give the impression that we're really good at wanting to give of ourselves and share our resources. But often it's easy to be cynical that really what you have is a very selfish desire to just want to be considered to be the nicest person in your family, maybe the, the nicest uncle or aunt, the best grandparent, the, the, the most exciting parent amongst your, your child's friends. And it's really not about giving, but really about taking. But is that fair? If I just destroyed all those people's generous acts of giving, and I think maybe I wasn't very fair. Although it's easy to look at people's giving as really taking for themselves because they get the credit. So it's really about earning themselves points. But I think that would be really, really unfair. There are times when someone can be really quite obnoxious, but we can feel their dilemma, feel their pain. Empathy. That's the lesson for today. We want to feel other people's joy and to be there when people need our help because they're going through a tough time. Sometimes you can have someone that's really obnoxious, really don't like them very much at all, but somehow you feel what they're going through and they're really annoying, but you develop a soft spot for them. You, think, you know what? I, I get your pain. I under, maybe I wouldn't act the way you're acting, but I, I feel what you're feeling. And you certainly would if you are an empathetic person. Some people are completely cold inside and have no have no apparatus to feel other people's pain. They walk around, they're completely clueless what's going on in the heart of another person. They're capable of seeing someone with the saddest of eyes, faking a smile and assuming everything's okay. They just don't see what there is to see. So have a look at this clip and then we'll talk again. To be. Well, I'm incredible. Boy. What? No, you're that kid from the fan club. Bro, bro, Brody, bud, buddy, buddy. My name is Incrediboy. Look, I've been nice. I've stood for photos, signed every scrap of paper you pushed at me, but this No, no, is... no, you don't have to worry about training me. I know all your moves, your crime-fighting style, favorite catchphrases, everything. I'm your number one fan. Hey, hey, what? So why is it that we feel a little bit sympathetic, although... He's so annoying, that little kid is just irritating and you feel for the superhero. You feel like, just get out of my way, I'm saving lives and you're just being a pain. There's something about the way that character acts that although he ends up causing all the mischief in the whole show, we're left not exactly hating him, feeling something in our hearts that sides with him or feels his difficulty. So when does this quality begin in, in young people? Listen to this, scientists have studied empathy, the ability to feel someone else's struggles or happiness even. They studied whether very young children, about 14 to 18 month old babies, could exhibit helping behavior. One experiment involved a person hanging a towel on a clothesline and accidentally dropping a clothes peg, which he pretends he can't reach. And another one, the experimenter tries to put a stack of magazines in a cupboard and he pretends he can't open the door because his hands are so full. In both of these situations, almost all of the children reached out and helped. It's amazing. We develop that ability to, to notice other people's struggles at the earliest age. By the way, they also found that rewarding the children was counterproductive. The children who were rewarded for helping were later less likely to help than those who had never been rewarded because then you start doing it for the gift and not for the real reasons. So think what that might mean in the way you, you anticipate a reward in, in a school situation or teachers reward or your parents reward you. Maybe it's better not to go down that route because it actually messes you up. Unless we work at compassion, unless we practice and change our habits and make it an active force in our lives, it will only be something that happens to us. We get angry when provoked, feel compassion when triggered and automatic reaction to the pain and need of our loved ones, or sometimes to complete strangers. If we leave it at that, we fail to tap in to the, the most amazing power that can grip us, that can transform everything about us. But to know more 
about compassion. You have to develop it. We'll keep studying it next Monday. Have a great week.